today we're gonna to be making a complete and balanced dog food recipe that's formulated for a more inactive dog, meaning that it's higher in protein, lower in fat, and a little bit more moderate in fiber. Now, if you hung out with me last week, I did have a more simple recipe that utilized a multivitamin in order to fill a nutritional gap. So that recipe, if you didn't use that multivitamin, would have had about 15 different deficiencies. This recipe is relying on more whole foods in order to supply those vitamins and minerals and needs less individual supplementation. So you can see more ingredients here, more variety as far as protein choice. Now, if you're not familiar with me, my name is Nikki. I'm a registered veterinary technician with a diploma in companion animal nutrition. And today I'm gonna show you how to cook your own dog food. Now, a couple disclaimers like usual before we move into the recipe. Number one, every single dog is an individual. Your dog may or may not tolerate individual ingredients within this recipe, or they may not generally need a recipe that's formulated in this way. If you're not sure if your dog is an inactive dog, go ahead and check my video on inactive dog nutritional needs or the nutritional needs for dogs that basically need a lower amount of calories in order to maintain a healthy weight. The other disclaimer that I wanted to make regarding this recipe is that though I am trying to use whole food sources for the vitamins and minerals within the recipe, I did make one particular decision that wasn't a whole food choice because of conversations that I've had with clients in the past. So I know from conversations with clients that finding Pacific oysters is very, very difficult and it's also oftentimes cost prohibitive. They are a whole food source of zinc. However, for many people, I know they're not an option. So for this recipe, it does not contain oysters in order to allow it to be more accessible. You can use oysters though as a source of zinc. You would just need to reformulate this recipe a little bit because they are also very high in copper. So you'd need to adjust kind of the liver hurt situation here. This recipe is gonna use a chelated zinc in place of that. And that is a basically zinc that is put together with an amino acid to make it so that it's highly digestible. The other supplements we're gonna be adding to this recipe are going to be a source of iodine, which can either be kelp or an iodized salt. We are gonna need a source of calcium. So that can either be eggshells or calcium carbonate. And then we are also going to be needing to add in a source of vitamin E and thiamine. So the reason why we're adding in thiamine to this recipe when you might not have seen with other recipes is because we are using a crock pot. So thiamine is a B vitamin that's particularly sensitive to heat. So when you are cooking in a crock pot, rather than cooking in something like a cast iron pan, the longer cook time will actually deplete the thiamine more. So you will need to supplement that back in. If I was making this recipe a little bit differently, not using a crock pot, I probably wouldn't actually need to be supplementing thiamine at all. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this recipe. So I have my crock pot here. This is a smaller crock pot because this is a smaller batch of food. I do actually have a jumbo one as well that I use for my own dogs. If you are making a larger batch of this recipe, you will obviously probably need a bigger crock pot. This is about a thousand calories of food. To give you some perspective, this is about the amount of calories per day that a 50 to maybe 55 pound dog would eat. So if you have a larger breed dog, you would need this for a week times seven in order to feed them. For a smaller breed dog that might eat about 200 calories a day, this might actually last you a couple of days and you could use a smaller crock pot. My dogs are 50 pounds. I have a much bigger crock pot that I personally use when I'm cooking their food. If you need help calculating batch size, or if you would like access to more recipes for inactive dogs that are minimally supplemented, make sure to check the links below. I do have a downloadable batch calculator along with a recipe book that has five recipes for inactive dogs for purchase on my blog. Okay, so let's go ahead and get on to the recipe. The first thing I'm going to actually add is gonna be my sweet potatoes. So sweet potatoes are actually a really, really good source of potassium, and that's why they were chosen for this recipe. They are actually a little bit higher in fiber as well, and because this recipe is formulated for a more inactive dog, we do want a little higher fiber content in order to help them feel satiated or fuller for longer periods of time. The next thing I'm gonna add is my rolled oats. Again, this is added because of its fiber content, but it's also added because oats are a really, really good source of magnesium, which is a mineral that is essential for ducks. Now we are gonna get into layering our proteins. So like I said, the chicken breast is mostly added 
to this recipe or chosen to this recipe because it is a really good source of lean protein. It's also a really good source of B vitamins for this recipe, but mostly I wanted to choose something like chicken breast over chicken thigh because of the lower amount of fat and because I wanna keep the caloric density of this recipe overall lower. And we are adding in some other protein sources that are higher in fat like the salmon and the eggs. Now, the next thing that's going in is the chicken hearts. Now, chicken hearts are a really good source of iron. Finally, we're gonna be adding in our beef liver. So beef liver, I feel like is kind of the overall almost multivitamin for this recipe. If you didn't use beef liver, you would have to add in a whole bunch of other supplements. But by using beef liver, we get all those trace nutrients that basically we need. And particularly though, it's very high in both vitamin A and copper. If you use poultry liver instead, this recipe will need copper supplementation. So you can't actually switch it out with something else. Now, the other items here, so we have salmon, eggs, and then I have my fruits and vegetables. These are not gonna be added in at the same time as everything else because salmon has a much smaller cook time. Same with our egg. So I'm actually gonna let this cook for probably about an hour to two hours before I add in these two ingredients. If you wanted to actually put them in all together, technically this recipe is formulated as a one pot recipe where everything is put together too. But I like to be able to separate them out just because I know that they're gonna have a better cook time. So last thing before I go ahead and cover this up is you're gonna need about a cup of water. Now this should go up just to the level of where the meat is of the recipe and not much more. Then we are just gonna cover this and put it on low, like I said, for about one to two hours. Then we're gonna come back and we're gonna add the salmon and the egg. If you are using one of those really big crock pots, your cook times are gonna be a little bit different just because of the volume of food. So I find using a small one, I'm checking it about the hour mark. If I'm doing a big batch using the larger crock pot, I'm actually gonna be checking closer to the two hour mark. But anyways, I'm gonna let this cook and then I'll be back in a little while. Okay, so it's been about an hour now, so I'm gonna be adding in my fish and my eggs to the recipe. So I'm just gonna open this up here. And then the first thing that's gonna go in is my salmon. And when I add this in, what I'm gonna do is kind of make a little spot in the center. And that is actually where my eggs are gonna be going. And then the eggs for this recipe, it's kind of one and a half eggs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack them, mix them up, like scramble them. And then I'm gonna be taking out a little bit as well. So I'll measure this here. And you can keep these eggshells. So if you wanna be more frugal, you can keep your eggshells and actually use them as a calcium powder. And I will have the amount for this recipe actually um, within the recipe description below. So you know how much you can add of either eggshell calcium or calcium carbonate. In order to use eggshell calcium, you do actually have to take these eggshells, you need to bake them in your oven, and then you're gonna have to go ahead and grind them into like a fine powder using mortar and pestle. That might be a little bit too much work for some people. So if you're kind of like me and would prefer not to be doing so many steps to make a calcium powder, you can also be using a calcium carbonate. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this together. So I only need 75 grams for this recipe. So I have a nice scrambled egg here. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to spoon out some of the eggs into this bowl until this is at 75 grams, which is the amount I need for this recipe and then go from there. If you do have one of those like turkey basters, you can actually use that to suck up the egg instead of doing it like this with a spoon. I know this takes a lot longer, but um, I don't have a turkey baster. So you can save this. You can actually freeze the part that you have left over in ice cube molds and use them for like your next batch for the amount that's here. Like I said, I made like a little spot in the middle of my crock pot and I'm just gonna pour this right in the center. Now the reason why I wanna kind of pour it in the center is because I find that when you put eggs into a crock pot, they stick to the outside and they can be really difficult to get off. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this to cook for probably another 30 minutes or so, and then it'll probably be completely done. All right, so it's been about 30, 45 minutes, and this is all done cooking. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're just gonna turn this off. So, and then I'm gonna go ahead and take my blueberries and the kale, and I'm gonna be pouring this into here. I stir it around and that's gonna kind of wilt the kale and it's gonna probably 
break down those blueberries just a tad. And then I'm gonna take all of this and it's gonna go into the fridge and it's gonna need to cool for probably about 45 minutes to an hour. If you made a really big batch, you might wanna do this part and then put it in the fridge overnight to cool potentially so that it's all the way cool before you add in your other things like your vitamins and minerals. Um, for this batch in particular, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my fridge and then I'll come back tomorrow. All right, so it's the next day with the recipe and for the recipe at this point, you need to make a decision as to if you want to feed the recipe warmed or if you're gonna feed it cold. Now this really comes down to if your dog really likes warmed food or not. A lot of older senior dogs, when their sense of smell kind of starts to wane, starting to heat up their food will actually help it so they eat more consistently. And then picky dogs, they're gonna be more likely to eat a food that is warmed because it's just gonna smell more appetizing to them. So you can make that decision. If your dogs are like mine and they don't really care, then you can probably serve this cold. Now serving it cold, gives you more flexibility in the sense that you can take your supplements, add them all in, mix it around, and then just portion it into daily containers. Or if you're using this as like a topper or something, you can put it into something like this West Pot and then feed it frozen even. But if you do have a dog that needs their food warmed, you're gonna have to be a little bit more creative with when you're adding in certain supplements versus others. So for this recipe, if I'm feeding it warmed, it's okay to add in our minerals. So the calcium carbonate or eggshell powder, the chelated zinc, and then also our kelp supplement. Then the day of, you'd be adding in your heat sensitive vitamins. So this is gonna be your thiamine, your vitamin E, and then your fish oil. Now, is, since I'm not gonna be feeding this warmed, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my minerals and my vitamins, mix this all around, and then I'm actually gonna portion it into West Foss because I'm gonna use this for supplemental feeding. So first we're gonna be adding in our kelp. You can also add in iodized salt as a source of iodine for this recipe. Next, we're gonna be adding in our source of calcium for this recipe. You can either use calcium carbonate or you can use eggshells, either one will work. The next thing added to this recipe is gonna be a source of zinc. I'm gonna grind up these for this recipe and then I can go ahead and put it in. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add in my vitamin E liquids. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in our vitamin B1, which is our thiamine. So like I said, we're adding that into this recipe because uh, we use a slow cooker. If you don't use a slow cooker, you wouldn't need to add this in. Now, if you're using the Nordic Naturals liquid, it's only gonna be a teaspoon, but I actually don't have that. So I'm gonna be using the capsules instead. I'm just gonna cut them open and then squeeze them into this recipe. Now you have a complete and balanced recipe for your dog. Now you can take this important this into individual containers to feed as a sole diet or you can put it into those West Paws and go ahead and feed it as a treat. It's totally up to you.